Welcome to Sound and Fury. I am Eric Wilfred Watson. And I'm Hugh Frank. And I'm Eric Wilfred Watson. Uh, say again? <laughs> Today we're going to talk about an Apple TV show that is based on the Foundation novels by Isaac Asimov. Yes. Oh, Chris Isaac Asimov. So I believe you watched about the first 30 seconds of this uh, of this show. Am I correct? I watched, I think I made it almost through the first whole episode of the first, I fell asleep. <laughs> not, not as, I mean, it's kind of slow moving. I, I, I can appreciate it. Um, I didn't really know what was going. I, I I knew what was going on. We did a whole show on the foundation and what that was about. So I knew the the premise of it. And then of course the, um, you know they explain a lot of it in there. Uh, but I I just, yeah, it it just didn't. Bull didn't way. Grip me. <laughs> yeah yeah. I, I can appreciate it for what it is, but I, it it didn't it didn't it didn't pull me in. Okay. So as a diehard fan of the books, I will say that there are some things about this show that are fantastic, some things that are okay, and some things that made me want to throw my shoe through my television. War. It's fantastic. <laughs> War. It's fantastic. Well, first of all, the basic premise is almost correct. Um, Harry Seldon is a scientist, mathematician, who comes up with the concept of a science that can predict the future, predicts that the empire is going to fall. The empire is not at all happy to hear this. They put him on trial. How long do you claim it will last? 30,000 years, advocate. I submit to the court that Dr. Seldon's predictions are actually intended to destroy public confidence. Um, they exile him to the foundation where he goes and creates his thousand year plan to mitigate the damage of the dying empire so that the empire can be reborn better than ever and human freedom can flourish and society can be society. We should be in the dark for a thousand years, advocate. And if that is all, we should thank the gods for it. And the 10,000 years of darkness he predicts are condensed into a single thousand years, which is supposed to be the span of the novels. That's all established in the first episode. Right. What they do different is in the foundation book, um, which I have right uh, here, the TV show is about this much of the book, maybe oh. that much of the book. The, now I'm not counting all the other books, but the TV show is this. This is not an entire season of television. So they needed to pad the running time a little bit. Gotcha. So they add a lot of palace intrigue that was not in the book, which is not a bad thing to do. They did a very interesting thing where they have a, ge a, a genetic dynasty. Dawn. Day. Dusk. Well, I didn't vote for the you. genetic dynasty. Empire. Demo's Demo's the delegations from Thespis and Anacreon are arriving. Welcome to Trent. So they have like young, middle-aged, old clones of the Emperor Cleon. And that's interesting. They didn't do that in the books, but it's an interesting way where you can have these same characters continue on through the generations. Yeah. And I thought that was clever. And there's a lot of really good palace intrigue. There's a lot of fun stuff going on with those three emperors and the conflicts that are there we are empire history bends to us i'm not going to get into spoilers in this but they do some interesting stuff with that and they establish them as really interesting villains which a good villain is kind of missing from the foundation story it's more of a science fiction story about ideas it's hard sci-fi it's not action adventure gotcha. so they shoehorn action adventure into this sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't they go a little bit too far in trying to make it a Game of Thrones. They have executions. Uh. <laughs> and 
killing off characters unexpectedly. I think they're trying too hard to make it Game of Thronesy. Gotcha. And when they do too much of that, when they go way off and doing these side stories that are taking you away from the core idea of the show, it really sags in the middle. The first two episodes, I think, are great. Then the third episode just shits the bed. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> I, I mean, I've heard. And it takes quite a few episodes to recover, and it just doesn't quite get up to par again for another few episodes. Are and then the palace the throwing your shoe at the TV episodes. Yes. Okay. Um, the palace intrigue stuff with the emperor, the, the emperors, the three empires are that's very interesting, and they do a good job with that. Um, but the actual foundation story almost gets lost. They have these side characters that are off on their side quests. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. But they kind of ignore the establishing of the foundation for a good long chunk of the show, which is irritating and <laughs> doesn't do it for me. But then they bring it back home. They get back to, oh, yeah, we're, we're supposed to be adapting the foundation book. Let's get back to that. And then it gets really good again for the last couple episodes. Gotcha. So they actually kind of get off of the foundation. Like like a house that's <laughs> mudslide, kind of yeah yeah oh I could go for one of those, but <laughs> but it was really good to see uh, the planet that is not Coruscant. Welcome to Trenton, the eye of the empire. Please respect and enjoy the peace. Planet uh the the capital planet of. Uh, oh, Trantor, that's what it's called. Trantor, Trantor yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But it's fun. Um, just to give you an example without... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you the context of this because I don't want to spoil the story, but I want to give you an example of why one thing that really shows... In Star Wars, they have to have Darth Vader killing people to show you that he's the bad guy. He chokes the shit out of everybody in Empire Strikes Back. So they needed to sh demonstrate to you that the emperors are not nice. I won't tell you how or why. You watch the, watch the story to find out. But somebody pisses off uh, one of the emperors. The emperor sits this person down and says, I've looked at your family history, went back multiple generations. We were able to find a great, 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 great grandparent and all of their sons, daughters, aunts, uncles, cousins. We were able to track down about 900 people that are related to you. Uh -oh. They've all been rounded up. Everybody you went to school with, everybody you've worked with, passed by on the street, had casual conversations with, ordered food from at a restaurant. We were able to come up with another 2,000 people. All of them have now been killed so that you have been erased from existence. The people who would remember you after you're gone. We're not going to kill you. We're going to feed you intravenously oh. and deprive you of all senses so that you will never hear, smell, or feel anything ever again, but you'll be aware. But you will be aware. And you will remember. And that's the last time you see that character. Wow. The Emperor's kind of a dick. A little bit. So basically, nobody's going to have any memory of him. And he's not... He's going to live the rest of his life not really knowing it. He basically, he's going to be like the the main character from Johnny Got His Gun. Yes, as punishment. Subject. But knowing that everybody you've ever been related to or ever met is dead because of you. Dang. That Dang. wasn't in the book. Asimov didn't write that shit. <laughs> no, no. That's like something Peter Steele would write. Everyone like, I, I love is dead. But anyway, yeah. But no, like I said, they're trying to Game of Thrones it. They're trying to bring in a dark element. They're trying to, you know, bring the emotional punch that is just kind of missing from this. Sometimes it works, right. sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I really like when they bring it home. Um, when the anybody who's read the Foundation book knows that there are these crises that will occur where uh, Harry Seldon, the main character, predicted what's going to happen, and then his predictions come true. And, oh, my God, this guy really did know how to predict the future. Gotcha. They kind of do that at the end, but not really. They didn't do it as well. And that's my biggest criticism is not what they add. It's what that should have been there that wasn't. They uh, didn't do as good of a job of having the aha moments. A good Asimov story sets things up, 
and then gives you a really good payoff. Aha, I see how you did that. That was perfect. This doesn't do as good of a job of that. Bummer. I but could, what it I does could... do well is has a fantastic fun setting. It's a lived in universe and it's a well thought out universe. What kind of idiots are you? A thousand imperial mathematicians can't pass the numbers of one man. So there's nothing anyone in the galaxy can do. And I give it like a seven out of 10. Um, I wish it was better than it was, but right. I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. If you can see the sky, you are trespassing on his eminence's sovereign territory. By the authority of Emperor Cleon the 13th, surrender immediately or face death. They flip the gender of a couple characters, which is fine. And they turn old white guy into a young black woman, which I'm fine. It doesn't need to be a sausage fest of old white guys. Perfectly <laughs> happy with them flipping the genders and flipping the race of a couple of these characters. That's fine. I'm perfectly happy that they're diversifying the cast. But one change that they made that I don't like is there's a robot character that uh, is just not the same character. Um, Asimov has this famous three laws of robotics where a robot can't harm a human. They just ignore that. And this robot can kill people. And it's not ah. an Asimovian robot at all. Unless they do something in season two to correct it, I'm not happy with what they did with this character. Um, the character is a good guy in the books. And in this movie or TV show, not so much. Huh. That sucks. And I don't want to get into spoilers, but they do something interesting at the very end with that that would be um, something to watch. But doesn't quite do it for me as an Asimov fan, but take it for what it is. I didn't you know, have any control over what was on the screen, but I will say it's just wonderful to see something I've been reading about and imagining in my head for decades to actually see it come to fruition, even yeah. if it's not exactly the way I would have done it still appreciative uh i still appreciate that they did in fact bring it uh to uh live action do you think they had to twist it at the end a little bit so it wouldn't be too predictable like ah oh, this is what happens in the book so this is what's going to happen in the like did they, ha did they have a little to go bit off i think a little bit? i think i think they did have to go off script earlier in the show and there's that's i think that's why they have the whole palace intrigue thing because they can do whatever right. they want with that because none of that was in the book true um but when they change things about the core characters and what their characters do and make it completely different, that I don't like so much. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. But with that, um, I still, if you're a science fiction fan, definitely watch it. If you like the classic books, definitely watch it. If you're more of a passive sci-fi fan, you just like Star Wars and Star Trek and you kind of like, if you're not, if you're not really into this, you're not going to like it at all. Yeah, and sometimes it's not, I'm as I'm on, sometimes it's I'm not, as I'm off. <laughs> it's not for the casual viewer. Like, non-fantasy fans can watch Game of Thrones. Right. I don't think non-sci-fi fans can watch Foundation. That's fair to say. I'll give it another mm -hmm. shot, though. And with that, um, that's all I have to say without getting into spoilers. So thank you very much. You can buy my non-science fiction book. There's not one spaceship in my book, Judas Kissed. Yes. But you can read it anyway. <laughs> Toodles. And it will then be possible to have millions, literary millions, of times as many mess messages carried on a on a wire or on a beam as we now can, so that everyone can possibly have their own television channel, the way we all now have our own telephone numbers. And uh, closed circuit television will become the great thing. And everything from education to research will be done by, by way of uh, communication, communication devices.